2002, I moved to New York from Tallahassee. And at the time, you know, I was friends with like guys like John Monopoly, Kanye, Don C. These were my boys from home. And Kanye had just kind of moved to New York around the same time. So when I got here, me and Kanye connected. He kind of brought me around. At the time, it was Baseline Studios. So like everybody from Rockefeller was at Baseline. So I met Hove and I met, you know, Beanie Siegel, Memph Bleak, all those guys, Lenny S. Um, and, you know, Just Blaze, um, Cam, all the dip set. It was, you know, Rockefeller was like right, lit right. at that time. Um, so what I started doing was I became like the liaison between – the producers because Kanye comes from a team of like producers in Chicago that had a similar sound. Um, and when he started, remember he started off as a producer, but then he started blowing up as an artist. Then guys wanted that same sound that he had given like Jay Z on blueprint. So what I did was being that I'm from Chicago, but I was living in New York. I was like, let me go back and reach out to some of these producers and start representing them because now the industry is up on that sound with the soulful samples and the flips. So I started managing some of the producers, bringing that sound to, to, the, to the industry. Um, and I would say I went from managing producers to managing songwriters, a couple artists here and there. Um, and once, you know, once, once you're doing that, again, this is before Instagram and Twitter and that sort of thing. It was just, you had to really get to know these guys from the execs, the A&Rs, the artists, artist managers. Um, and once you, you know, you start developing those relationships, then I was dealing with a lot of the labels. And that was pretty much my intro into the, into the industry. Um, but but how started- did you get, how did you get in the building? Because that, that's the, you know, it's one thing to be on the outside. Anybody can pick up tomorrow and say, hey, I want to manage talent, right? Right. There's no real qualifications for that. If you're a hustler and you're somebody who doesn't take no for an answer, you'll probably get your artist signed or you'll get your beat sold. Right. How did you get into the building and ultimately get the position? Because you, 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 right now, you're a big wig. Your name mm-hmm. rings bells. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to get a meeting with you. How did you climb the ranks to become the VP of a um, and R at Atlantic Records. That's a good question, and I, I tell people, you know, I'm definitely a hustler at heart. And and when I look at hustling, I look at it from the smart, work smarter, not harder, right? So I'm like, okay, here's the other thing that I did, right? So when Kanye brought me to Baseline, at the time I was a sneakerhead. I was a sneaker enthusiast. This was before all of the resellers was really killing it. And, and, you know, it was, it was going crazy the way it is now. So at the time I, I had certain resources where I could get exclusive sneakers for the low. And that was part of what I had. So like, you know, I would go do a meeting with fab and clue at the studio and I'm, I'm selling fab and clue some sneakers and I'm also giving him a beat tape. At the time, beat, you know I like that. <laughs> so Fab, all these guys start calling me like, yo, Jada Kiss, you know, these guys start calling me and I was known as the dude with the kicks as well as the beats. So that's really when you talk about, you know, anybody can like come up to you and they come up to me and be like, bro, listen to my demo. I'm dope. Check out my music. But it's like, I figured out, okay. Just Blaze is a sneakerhead, you know, Skane, Dollar, and Clue are sneakerheads. Fab, all these guys, everybody was, was, was excited about sneakers. So my angle was not just music. It was like, okay, come with the fire, which the, the tangible item is this sneaker. They're going to buy this sneaker. But because I have that relationship now, let me pitch some music. And, you know, they're going to at least give me the opportunity to press play. If they press play and they hear something they like, oh, now it's lit. Now I'm like, okay, I'm in there, and I start building that relationship. So now they're like, okay, this guy definitely has an ear, 
So every time I would come through with kicks, it would also be like, yo, play me some new heat. So then, you know, that that was my angle. And I tell people, don't come up to me and just say, yo, check out my beats, I'm dope, or check out my music. You got to, like, figure out something that we have in common or something that's going to make me want to hear it outside of just everybody that's coming up saying, yo, check out my music, I'm dope, I'm dope. So my angle was working smarter, not harder, and just figuring out, okay, this guy, of course, this is a gatekeeper, but how do I also impress this person with something outside of simply just saying, here, please listen to my music? Because a lot of times these guys are busy. They don't, you know, if you're on an elevator and you got your elevator pitch, what's going to make you stand out? What's going to make me be like, okay, I definitely got to go press play on this because that kid made such an impression on me that I feel like I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and at least go press play. And so that was my strategy. Again, it wasn't Instagram. So, so, so let me ask you something, and I'm sorry to cut in here. Uh-huh. Because this is a you, – you're touching on something I was going to touch on later in the interview. And I know I, I asked you earlier, how did you actually get your position? So we'll mm-hmm. go back to that. But if I'm a kid right now right. and I see you on the street and I'm like, oh, my God, that's success. Mm-hmm. How do I get your attention? Because I got to believe people are emailing you every day. Your inbox is cluttered. I don't know if you and you can even answer that. Do you, yeah. you know, go through your emails and actually listen to artists and listen to beats? But if I just happen to bump into you and I know when I was coming up in the um, record industry. We would actually go stand outside of the record labels, and I would know how the A and Rs looked. As soon as yes. I saw them, I would pounce all over them. Does that <laughs> approach work? Like, how do I get your attention? That approach is the the guerrilla style approach, and believe it or not, they still do that. They post up outside the building, um, and yeah, sometimes cats know who we are. It's me specifically, they know who I am. Um, I'm super low key and and I'm one of the humbler guys that I'm, you know, I just do my thing. I'm not one of these flashy, you know, I I just, I'm super humble, chill. But, but like, yeah, if you approach me, I'm going to give you an opportunity. But again, our conversation has to be memorable enough where it's like, okay, if he's saying certain things that it's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to give this kid a shot. I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to press play based on that. How often does that happen for you? Probably once a week, right? That somebody Frequently. actually comes with a memorable introduction to you. Their sales yep. pitch is on point that you yep. say, I'm, I'm, you know what? I loved your approach. I'm really going to go upstairs and listen to this now. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, again, I was that guy. So I, 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 you know, I look at things like, you know, everything happened for a reason. So I'm like, you know what? There was a reason I was supposed to meet this kid right this moment. And so I'm going to give him a shot. I'm going to go press play. Now, rather than not, it makes it to the next meeting or a kid actually gets signed. I can say there's been a lot less of that, but I definitely give cats a shot. I go through my emails again, because I was a producer manager first. I'm the guy that's going to go through and listen to all the beats. I'm going to go and, and, you know, I may not get right back to you in a day or two, but you know, I, I'll catch up with my emails. It might be a week or two later and I'm still going through my emails and I'm gonna hit you back. Like, yo, this is fire. This is okay. Send more because people have to understand it benefits us to find you. So it's like, you know, Cass is like, yo, how do I get a deal? And it's like, I tell people, listen, my job depends on me finding you and discovering your talent and helping you take that to the next level. So it's just as much important for me to find you as you're looking for this deal. And so I tell people, all you got to do really is put your music out, start connecting with a fan base and we will find you the days of begging for a deal. Yo, you know, it's a different game now. Like artists are putting out their music. They putting it on DSPs, you know, digital streaming platforms. They're putting together marketing plans and rollout plans visuals are dope and you know they're getting brand partnerships and alliances and it's our jobs to go out and be like yo i've been watching this kid he's been consistent the music is good the visuals are dope i want to get a meeting with this kid and that's really 
that organic approach is is what's getting artists deals now we want to be in business with artists who are moving like an independent not the guys that's begging for the label that still think the label is gonna you know is gonna determine your destiny like no we want to see the people that's out there you know doing shows when shows open back up putting out music consistently shooting dope videos rolling it out and and building you know the numbers may not be crazy this time but a month later they dropped another one and a month later they dropped another one those are the guys that we paying attention to what's up guys thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video truly appreciate you if you like anything you heard here today go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.